ongoing deliverance, ongoing deliverance or continual uh, deliverance. And so, um, Brother Fred, I'll turn okay. it over to you. Okay. Uh, one of the first times I thought about this uh, message and this topic was uh, a woman contacted us and she had uh, just been married and she had married a sinner. She was a Christian, but she married a sinner and then she uh, led him to the Lord. And so he was a new believer. Uh, and while he was, while they were dating, uh, they, she, he was very sweet to her, but once they got married, uh, she realized uh, there were a lot of darkness, a lot of darkness in him and a lot of different things. And so she wanted to send him off uh, to be delivered. And uh, uh, it, it's kind of like buying a puppy, getting a little puppy and, and say, OK, I'm just going to put it in this uh, cage and, and send it off to, to, uh, to uh, obedience school. Mm -hmm. And then when it's obedient, well, you just bring it back to me. And uh, but that's not the way even obedience school works. Uh, they want you to come and you bring the puppy and then they train you how to train the puppy. And so uh, deliverance, and we're talking about deliverance, deliverance is a process. It's an ongoing process. And, and it doesn't happen uh, overnight. It, it's for the rest of your life. We're all in the process of being delivered. And that's uh, 2 Corinthians 1.10 that says, God has delivered us. That's the past. He is delivering us. That's the present. Mm -hmm. And he will yet deliver us mm -hmm. in the future. Amen. Amen. And so I believe this is an important message. And we all need to understand that there is a process of deliverance that we're going to talk about. But we see it in the Old Testament. And it's good to see shadows and types in the Old Testament. Because when... Uh, Israel, the Israelites came out of Egypt. They went through the Red Sea and then they went into the promised land. Well, going through the Red Sea is a type of being born again. And, the, and so you, you would think, okay, so uh, you've gone through being born again. And so you shouldn't have any more problems, but then they went into the promised land and you had all of these enemies. Right, right. And that's what happens to us. We're born again, but we continue to have enemies. We continue uh, to have things that we have to overcome. And, and a lot of people don't understand that. And, and part of the reason is that they don't recognize the difference between the spirit of man and the soul of man. Uh, but Hebrews 4.12 says there is both a a spirit, spirit and, and a, a soul. soul. And you'll only know it when you know the word, because it's the word that separates. W without knowing God's word, you'll just think all of those things blend together. But what happens, see, we're on a journey, and when we're born and then we begin to move on our journey, uh, the world begins to program us, program our thinking, program our emotions, and everything about us begins to, and then we meet Jesus one day mm. and we're born again. Now, what happens when we meet Jesus and are born again? Uh, it's our spirit man mm. that is born again. Uh, and then beyond that point, uh, really, our soul hasn't changed. Our, our thinking, our attitude, our emotions. Nothing has changed. We continue on and the world continues to program us, but God wants to reprogram, oh, yeah. reprogram oh, yeah. us and re and program us differently than the world has always. And what do I mean by the world? I mean, it's our parents, our, our siblings, our friends at school, our, the school and the teachers and the government and the TV and the, and, uh, everything we're involved in, all of that is trying to program us to be conformed to the world. But God is wanting us to be conformed to Christ. And so we've got this real conflict and, and we're always going to be dealing with this conflict the rest of our life. And, and so we're, first we're going to just look at Israel. Uh, and so when they went into the promised land, God made a really interesting statement in Deuteronomy 7, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read this, that deliverance is a process little by little. 
we, we want it to happen overnight, but God operates in a process mm -hmm. little by little. So let's read this mm -hmm. verse, Deuteronomy 7. Okay. And the Lord your God will drive away these nations from you little by little. You will not be able to put an end to them quickly. Otherwise, the wild animals would become too numerous for you. Okay, so the beasts are going to rise up. The mm -hmm. land, if God just drove out all of the enemies uh, when Israel went across the Jordan. And the Red Sea? God, well, now moving into oh, the, the Jordan. promised land. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So they've gone through the Red Sea, and they've mm -hmm. gone through the over the Jordan. Jordan, okay. And they're in the promised land. Now, God could have supernaturally removed all of those yeah, enemy all the nations, enemies yeah but they had to overcome them one by one and it was a process one by one and god removed them little by little and so that process god's really uh into processes and it's important for us to know how god thinks and to operate like god thinks mm. and uh and we see this same thing in uh um I'll just mention it. I'm not going to read. I won't have Sherry read the whole chapter, but it's in Matthew t chapter 12. And it's it's stated again in the New Testament, this process. And he said, uh, if you cast out an unclean spirit, mm -hmm. if you cast out an unclean spirit, it's going to go away. And then it's going to come back. And it's going to look at your house, which is you. And uh, if you haven't filled it up, if there's any mm -hmm. void spots mm -hmm. in there, then that that uh, demon is going to get seven others, and they're going to be uh, worse, worse than, he, than is, he is, and, and come back. And so it's those beasts rising up. So this is the same thing uh, that God said in Deuteronomy. Now Jesus is repeating it in Matthew that we don't just uh, get rid of all of the demons. Uh, all of the wickedness, all of the evil thoughts, because we've been programmed with those. If we if we got rid of those, then those beasts would rise up and they would come back and we'd be in worse shape than we were to begin with. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to see is that we have a spirit and we have a soul. When we're born again, our spirit becomes alive but our soul has not changed. And so we have to reprogram the soul. That means that mm -hmm. everything that's against God in our emotions, in our thinking, mm -hmm. he wants us to reprogram that. Uh, and it's a little by little process. And it's something that we're all involved with for the rest of our lives. I know that you are all Christians. That means that your spirit is born alive yes. born again it's yes. alive to christ but now we are all dealing with dealing with the emotions and our mind uh and our will and what we're wanting to do and this is what god wants us to do is to make our soul look just like jesus amen, Woo! amen, amen. you can have a soul that looks just Ooh, like jesus it says that we have his mind okay so, so that we can think like him hallelujah okay so one of the things that's important to understand here is that god uh looks at things different than man and god thinks high, his thoughts are higher than man so when god looks at you he sees you complete in Jesus Christ, but we have to walk that out. We have to walk it out. And so even though he says you can have the mind of Christ and, and God sees you complete, uh, you still have to renew your mind little by little. And that's a process that goes on the rest of, of your, your life. life. Amen. The rest of your life. It's not Oh, I came to Jesus. Now my mind is renewed. My emotions are all, they look just like uh, Jesus. And so every time anything happens in my life, I respond exactly the way Jesus responds. Uh, no, that's something we have to train. We have to be trained in that. And, and let's go back to another uh, verse in uh, Judges chapter 3. And uh, this says that we have to be trained for war. This, 
This was uh, Israel. They had to be trained in the art of war. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Uh, so, so there were uh, one generation fought, fought mm -hmm. a lot of battles and they conquered a lot of enemies, but other generations also had to learn the art of war. Mm -hmm. And so let's Hallelujah. just read this because it's the same thing. You and I are going to have to be trained in the art of of war. Let's read this verse. Uh, Judges 3 verses 1 and 2. And this is from the message. These are the nations that God left there, using them to test the Israelites who had no experience in the Canaanite wars. He did it to train the descendants of Israel, the ones who had no battle experience in the art of war. Okay, so there were there were people and, and enemies kind of like the Philistines and other people still in the land that God promised the Israelites. And so he's saying these, these uh, younger people are going to still have to be trained for war. Mm -hmm. And what I want you to see uh, in uh, Romans, uh, Sherry, read oh, Romans, <laughs> and it says, there is no good thing in my flesh. Now, that means my emotions, see, have been programmed by the world. My mind has been programmed by the world, and my will has been programmed by the world, and so there's nothing good in my flesh. So I'm going to have to learn, I'm going to have to train, be mm -hmm. trained myself to deal with these issues. So read Romans first. Romans 7 verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. Nothing. There's nothing good Ooh, in our flesh. Nothing good in the flesh. Okay. So we have to be trained for war because we're going to overcome the flesh. In, my, in other words, we're going to crucify the flesh. Ooh. Hallelujah. The flesh, and, that, and that's all of your soul and your emotions and your mind and your will, all that has to be crucified and your mind renewed uh, so that you have the mind of Christ. Now let's read this. We have, you and I have to be trained for war, but our war is not like the Israelites when they were fighting the Philistines. Let's see what, how we are trained. Okay. In 2 Corinthians 10. Yes. Uh, verse three through five. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage battle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of all fortresses. Woo. We are destroying arguments and all arrogance oh, raised okay. against the just, knowledge just, of God. Just a minute. Let's see. We have spiritual weapons. And what is it that we are going to be destroying? Let's read those verses. It that says we again. are destroying arguments and all arrogance raised against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Okay. So we have a different Hallelujah. kind of warfare than the Israelites had. They were fighting the Philistines and they were fighting other enemy nations. But you and I are in a warfare and we have to be trained. That's what we're doing in these Tuesday night sessions. Amen. We're all learning how to conduct spiritual warfare. warfare because we have to bring every thought into captivity so that our soul looks just like, like Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I want you to look just like Jesus and respond um, to situations just like, like Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Okay. Amen. So I, I want to I want to focus on the soul for a minute. Now remember, the soul is your mind, but it's also your emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes does your mind go uh, round and around or and, and get frustrated? And sometimes do your emotions go up and down? Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about how do you deal with these kinds of issues. And we're going to look at this concept of saving our soul. See, when we're born again, mm, our mm, spirit mm, is saved, saved, but we have not saved our, our soul. soul. That's Ooh, a that's hallelujah. a lifetime. That is something you do over your rest of your life. Once you come to Jesus, 
Then you begin to save your soul. So we're going to look at two verses here that help us understand how do we save our soul. Mm -hmm. In 1 Peter 1, 9, and you are receiving, or because you are receiving, the goal, the outcome, the purpose of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay. So you you have faith. You have faith. Mm -hmm. Just hold on to the mm -hmm. piece of paper. You have faith. And what is the goal of your faith? It is to save your, your soul. soul. Hallelujah. In other words, it's to make your soul look, look like, like Jesus. Jesus. Woohoo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reason you have faith to so that you save your soul so that your soul looks like, like Jesus. Jesus. Now let's read this next verse. How do we do it? This next verse is going to tell us mm -hmm. how we make our soul look like Jesus. Our spirit already looks like Jesus. Uh, well, as soon as we're born again, it looks like it's a it's immature but and has to grow. But now we're talking about mm -hmm. our soul. This is our mind and our emotion. So let's see how we save our soul or make it look like Jesus. This is in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 21. So get rid of all uncleanliness and all that remains of wickedness, and with a humble spirit receive the word of God, which is implanted, actually rooted in your heart, which is or your spirit, which is able to save your soul. Oh, hallelujah. Here it is. This is how you save your soul so that when you face problems or you face relationships, uh, difficulties in relationships, you will respond like Jesus responds to that. Okay, so if there are people around you who are fussing and fighting at you and, and doing these things or there are people that have stabbed you in the back or people have uh, spoken about you, your emotions, see, you need to respond to those the way Jesus would respond. And the, this verse tells us how that happens. It's through the Word of God. But it's not knowledge about the Word of God. It is about the Word of God gets rooted in your spirit or in Hallelujah. your heart. You know, Joy mentioned earlier when we were talking with her, that, that she needs these sessions. We all need these, these sessions, sessions because this is helping get the word to be rooted in our hearts so that we can act like Jesus. Hallelujah. So when we find difficult situations, we will act the way Jesus acts. Uh, it's not good enough just to memorize some scriptures. It the verses need to be rooted. The word of God needs to be rooted inside of our spirit. And then we will act like Jesus. So our spirit man is born again when we accept Jesus Christ. But then we have to put the word of God in us. It has to get rooted so that we begin to act like Jesus. Amen. There's a lot of people that say they are born again, that they have accepted Jesus as their uh, Savior. Lord and Savior, uh, but, uh, oh, hallelujah, they're not making any changes, and then they think, well, I've got a ticket to heaven, so everything's okay. okay. I don't need to make any changes, but we have to change every day, and, and the way you do it is by like being in meetings like this mm -hmm. so that we receive the word of God. It gets rooted in us. It becomes alive. It begins to produce fruit in our lives so that we speak like Jesus. We act like Jesus. That's the Amen. process, Amen. but it's a process. It's day by day over the rest of your life. It does. It never ends. It's an ongoing process. It's just like when God brought Israel into their promised land. He said, I'm not going to drive the enemies out overnight one time uh, because the land would be desolate and the beasts would increase. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing Jesus is saying to us. 
We can't just cast demons out because when we're programmed by the world, we have wickedness inside of us, in our thinking, in our emotions. We have uh, evil and, and darkness there. And so uh, if, if we eliminated all of that and cast out all the demons at one time, then what's going to happen? Those beasts are going to rise up and come back. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we get into little meetings like this and we receive the word of God and we let it become rooted in our hearts and it grows up and becomes alive to us so that we can look and act like Jesus and mm -hmm. speak like Jesus. Now I have two more verses uh, and I'd like for Sherry to read these next two verses let's look at these one is galatians 1 4 i love this one i speak it over myself every day who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world okay now sherry made an according to the will of god and our father so so this is we're being delivered from the evil world oh yeah did you know you need to be delivered from the evil world. Now, how are you going to be delivered from? It's by Jesus Christ. It's by your relationship with him. It's by the word of God getting planted in your heart and, and putting down roots and rising up and producing fruit in your life. Then you can overcome this present evil world, but it's not one time. It's You have to do this every day. Sherry said she confesses this verse over oh. her every day. Yeah. We all need to be confessing this verse. He has delivered us. us. He is, he is delivering, delivering us. us and now. He, he will, will deliver, deliver us, us in, in the future. future. What's he delivering us from? This evil we'll world. present evil world. This present evil world. He's delivering us. Jesus came to deliver, deliver us from this present evil world. So we're not... We're not controlled, we're not manipulated by the world, but we are ruling in life, life through, through Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you're getting a hold of this. I'm getting a hold of Amen. it. Amen. And I'm getting encouraged and I'm getting <laughs> built up in my spirit that we're being delivered from something. And, and we're, oh, hallelujah, we're, we're not being defeated and we're not uh, the... Uh, tail, but we're the head, Hallelujah. and we are ruling in this life because we are being delivered from the world. The Hallelujah. world is not manipulating and controlling us. It's not controlling our thought processes. It's not controlling how we respond to people when we face a problem. The world is not, we're not responding like the world tells us to respond. We're responding like Jesus. If we oh, face yeah. a problem, we need to respond to it like Jesus responds Amen. to it. Amen. Now, there's one uh, final verse I want to talk about, and I'll have Sherry read it. It's uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 2. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for not all have faith. Okay. Woo! We are being delivered from wicked and unreasonable Reasonable people who do not, not have, have faith. faith. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's worth it. I also confess that scripture over myself. It, it's worth it to serve the Lord. Amen. We're, we're being delivered from the world. We're being delivered from, from wicked, wicked and unreasonable. Men and women who men have not women faith. Who do not have faith. So we need to be delivered. Okay, so I want to go back to uh, the way I introduced it. And that is, we've had a lot of people contact us mm -hmm. and say, oh, uh, I know I've got all of this darkness in my thinking and I've got these evil thoughts. Yes. And the devils are uh, attacking me. And so maybe I need to go someplace and be delivered from all of this. That's not God's process. God's process is said, we need to be fellowshipping around the word, word of, of God, God Amen. so that the word of God gets into our heart and we can overcome because we are in war. We need to be trained. And so what I'm doing tonight is training you on how to take every thought 
captive yeah. into the obedience of Jesus Christ. That's our warfare, to take every thought captive into the obedience of Jesus Christ. Now, is that going to happen one time? No, it's mm -hmm. every day. Hey. Every day. When I look at TV, when I look at TV, I might turn the channel sometimes, and I see something on the TV that I wished I'd never seen. Uh, and, and, but I can't unsee what I've seen. And so I've got to take those thoughts captive. I can't let my mind run away where the, where the TV producers want me to go. I cannot go there. I have to bring every thought, thought. into captivity. Uh, there may be people who, uh, I've had people scream at me, uh, cuss me out, uh, speak all kinds of evil things about me. And am I going to respond to that like the world responds? No, I have to take every thought into captivity and I have to speak like Jesus and act like Jesus. That's our warfare. Amen. Our warfare is to act like Jesus and speak like Jesus and think like Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's a Hallelujah. process. It's a little by little. God said, I'm not going to run all these enemies out overnight. No, it's a little by little process. And that's the way it is with you and me. He's training us to be victorious in this life in every situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In every situation. We're, we're not to be defeated in any situation because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of, of, of our, our testimony. testimony, what we're saying. And we love not our lives unto the death. So this is a very practical message that this is why we need to meet and have fellowship and teaching around the word of God. Amen. So that we can get the word of God planted in our heart, not just up here in our mind, but planted in our heart so that it becomes a, a tree and producing fruit and it keeps you. See, if you've got your roots, they go down deep, then you will not be blown yeah. uh, from one side to another side by the doctrines of men mm -hmm. and what they're saying on TV. And, and when you go to a doctor and you get a bad report, you're not going to be blown from one side to another side because you have a bad report, but you can rise up because you have the word of God planted in you. It's not just up here in the intellect uh, because there's no root system up there in the intellect. It has to be planted oh, in your heart mm, so that mm. your mind can be renewed and you can think like Jesus, talk like Jesus, mm -hmm. act like Jesus. Amen. That's what real deliverance is. So many people want a quick fix, fix. in their life. And they want a quick fix in their spouse. Or well, the spouse is not doing right, not thinking right. And so they want to send him off to obedience school and get him delivered from all the darkness. But I tell you, we have to work together as a husband and a wife. That's what yeah. Sherry and I try to do. We have to work. We have to change. I have to change. She has to change. We have to become more like Jesus. We have to become, uh, we have to be thinking like Jesus, talking like Jesus, and acting like Jesus. That's the process. So I can't send Sherry off to obedience school, and she can't send me off to obedience school and have me get all corrected and come back and do that one time. That's not the way God no, operates. Man. It's a process, little by little. He's training us to war so that we can bring every thought into captivity because the weapons that we have are spiritual. Amen. They are supernatural and they are mighty weapons to bring every thought into captivity. I hope that you're encouraged tonight by the word of God, by the spirit Amen. of God, what the spirit is saying to us, that we're all growing. We're all on a journey and our journey uh, we've got faith. He, God gave us the faith. He gave us faith. And our the reason he gave us faith, the goal of our faith is to yes. renew our mind. And save to, our and soul. And save our soul. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, that's good, Freddie. Hallelujah. That's real good. I'm, thank you for being hallelujah. here. I'm going to turn this over to Sherry.
Yeah, I just have uh, just a few things to to say uh, concerning the process, uh, the process of deliverance uh, that God uses. And every time you come into the presence of the Lord and you spend time with the Lord uh, during your prayer time, during your devotion time, uh, during a time where you're reading the word uh, or reading about the word, then when you come into his presence, he will give you something. Every time you come to him, he imparts into you part of himself. Now, I just want you to catch hold of this. I, I'm seeing it in the spiritual realm. He imparts into you part of him. You know, it says that we've been to get be we have been given his divine nature. And Freddie has been talking about acting like Jesus, speaking like Jesus, thinking like Jesus. And the way we get there is by spending time with, with, with Jesus. With, the, with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. And, and you, if you have a, a good friend and you, you want to be like that good friend, you want to be joyful and you want to have peace and, and you want to speak like this friend, then you spend time with that friend. And, and that's the same way it is with Jesus, that we have to spend time with him and in his word and through prayer, uh, through praying in the spirit. Uh, where, where it says, build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And that's in the book of Jude. And so thinking about this process, uh, there's a book that Brother Fred and I have uh, have read, and, and it was a Chinese author, and it's called The Art of War. Oh, yeah, yeah, The Art of War. It's, it's called The Art of War, and it's a, by a Chinese author. And in, in that book, it talks about uh, your enemies. It talks about strategies uh, of warfare. And um, it's, a, it's not actually a, a spiritual book, but it is a, a book about warfare. And it's called The Art of War. And, uh, and it, it has been very helpful uh, to, to go through that book and look at the different uh, strategies, if you've got this enemy or that enemy and, and your position, uh, your authority, uh, and all of that is important in the art of war. And, uh, and I know that Freddie mentioned, uh, about the art of war that we're training, you know, we're training people, uh, to fight. We're training people, uh, to become more like Jesus. And, um, and so this is this word. Um, uh, this word was beautiful tonight, and uh, I thank the Lord for it.